on today's episode, we survive a near fatal grizzly bear encounter. In 2016, I traveled from Canada to America by bike. From Banff in the Canadian Rockies to Missoula, Montana, we'll survive the ride, the grizzly bear encounter, and Giardia. And all along the way, biking fully self-supported. Over two weeks and 600 miles through some of the most beautiful and untouched nature in all of Canada and America. Stay tuned and hit that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss this five-part series. This is Getaway. On this trip, I was joined by my parents. And I had convinced them to go on their first ever bikepacking adventure. What a way to start. With one of the most famous and magnificent bikepacking routes in the entire world, the Great Divide. But what is the Great Divide? Great Divide is the world's longest off-road bike route. From Banff, Canada to the border of Mexico, the route traverses over 2,700 miles and has over a quarter million feet of combined elevation gain. It follows the Continental Divide, which is the dividing line dictating whether water flows east or west. As such, it covers the most stunning and mountainous terrain that North America has to offer. If you're interested in doing this route yourself, I've pinned the map and trip resources below. Now, let's pick up where we left off on episode one, day three on the world's longest off-road bike route. After a few beautiful days away from civilization, we stay the night at Bolton Creek Campground Bolton Creek Campground had breakfast, a shower, and a little store. I thought I was prepared for the next day of riding. I was clean, I had a good breakfast, and I was excited for what laid ahead. But I could never have prepared for what would happen next. Now, if you've watched the last episode or are familiar with the route, you would know just how much of a grizzly bear risk there is, especially when biking. That risk remains in the back of your head throughout the whole journey but you take extra precautions to ensure you don't have an encounter. You see, the main risk comes from startling a bear. If you rip around a corner and startle a bear, you're pretty much toast. That being said, bears don't want anything to do with you. And so if they hear you, they will get off the trail. Hopefully, you'll never meet. It's kind of a mutually beneficial arrangement. That being said, it goes without saying that you want to be loud and make your presence known. To do this, we had bear bells on our bike and around every corner we would yell, hey bear. And you would never go around a corner blind. So why am I telling you this? Let's go back to Bolton Creek where we just set off along a paved road. You see, it's that paved road that placed me in a false sense of security. Up until this point, we've been on dirt, and we've been away from civilization. So I guess I just wasn't thinking straight. The trailhead was at the bottom of this dip. So I ripped down the hill, out in front, right past a park ranger's truck, and took a left turn quietly into the trailhead. <sighs> to be honest, my memory of that moment feels like a blur. Next thing I know, I was slamming on the brakes. <laughs> staring face to face with a mother grizzly bear and her cub. There were about two car lengths in front of me. And they were walking across the road parallel to my stopped bike. The mother reacted immediately. She turned to me and began to stand up. I, I can't even describe. Now, if you haven't seen just how big and strong a grizzly bear is, like truly is, it's chilling. As she motioned towards me, I remembered my mind going blank as a wave of acceptance and fear rushed over me. In a bear encounter, you're supposed to stand your ground, but all I could do was begin to back up. 
I'm not sure how much time passed in that moment. Looking back though, I could have easily died or been seriously injured as the mama bear protected her cub. But what happened next then? Honestly, a lot of luck. Remember that car I passed turning into the trailhead? A lone park ranger's truck. Next thing I know, I hear honking. I see the car accelerate past me and drive right up to face the bear in my stead, laying on the horn the whole time. After considering a fight with the truck, the bear motioned to its cub and ran off into the forest. I had been saved. You know, it took me a long time to process that interaction. But I come to grasp with what had happened to me and just how lucky I was. I still think about it from time to time. And boy, am I thankful the ranger was there at the time he was. Turns out he'd been tracking the bear and its cub through to the trailhead. And after seeing me take that turn, he feared the worst. To be honest, after the bear had run off, it all seemed a little bit unreal. Maybe even anticlimactic. I waited for my parents, and we got started on the trail, now with an even greater appreciation for being lounged around corners. After about an hour of biking, we came to the top of a clearing, and we looked down to see the same bear and cub feeding far off in the distance. Another reminder of my close encounter. Riding further along the ridge line, we continued to find ourselves surrounded by some of the most beautiful scenery in all of North America. I think the visuals speak for themselves. After an undeniably amazing ride along the ridgeline, we dipped into this stunning river valley where we rejoined with some old forest roads. Riding along the river, we came to a beautiful campground where we spent the night. The next day, we continued our trek, riding along that same forest road, following the river, until we arrived in the first town of our trip, Elkford. Elkford is a mining town nestled deep in British Columbia. Founded in the late 1970s, it is now a stop along the Great Divide bike route. Named after its abundant elk population, it now balances industry and nature. It's a pretty cool place, a really small town, but in a beautiful location with crazy wide, large strip quarries, as well as those massive earth moving trucks, unfortunately cutting into the mountainsides. The cyclists traverse the 2,800 mile route from Canada to Mexico though, it offers a crucial respite and refuel amidst the stunning Rockies, an area of the trip that's especially remote. After some real food at a restaurant and a shower and bed courtesy of the Elkford Lodge, <laughs> and don't let that name fool you, it's just a little motel, we were ready for the next day's ride. After riding along a mix of paved and fire roads, we eventually started to re-merge with regular car traffic as the towns got a little bit bigger and the next slightly larger town we would be passing through was Sparwood. A little bit bigger than Elkford, Sparwood is also nestled against the Rocky Mountains. It has a rich coal mining legacy that echoes through time along the Great Divide mountain bike route that runs through it. The town's name pays tribute to the towering spar trees that were integral to the mining operations, reflecting both industry and the natural surroundings. Today, Sparwood remains a prominent waypoint on the iconic biking route, offering a haven for cyclists to recharge amidst breathtaking landscapes. This convergence of history, growth, and adventure exemplifies the spirit of the Great Divide mountain bike route. My favorite part of Sparwood was getting to check out the old massive earth movers that they had in a park in the center of town. Now I should mention that there are multiple points where you can choose between more or less direct routes. Our next main stop was Fernie and with our two week window, we decided to take the more direct route. That being said, if I was to do it a route again, I think I would have taken the less direct route into the hills. The reason for that is twofold. 
For on one, the route into the hills is supposedly much more scenic. And on the other, the route we ended up taking was almost exclusively paved with large sections on side of the freeway. I remember being terrified riding over tight bridges with traffic and trucks blaring past us at highway speeds with the frame bags and the weight on our bikes. Each big truck would send a gust of wind pushing you further to the limit of stability. At least when riding on paved ground, you can be a little more efficient as you don't have as much rolling resistance. And so after a really long day's ride, where we put in some real miles, we made it to Fernie, a picturesque ski town in the heart of the Rockies. Fernie, a town steeped in history and adventure, is intertwined with the legacy of the Great Divide mountain bike route. Founded in the late 19th century as a coal mining and logging hub, Fernie's earlier years were defined by the resilience and determination of its settlers. The town's rich mining heritage is etched into its architecture and culture. It's got this beautiful downtown with what you would picture in an old Western. Old buildings and stone walls with a degree of care and craftsmanship that you don't see as much anymore. This town is beautiful and it's a testament to the hardworking spirit that shaped its identity. Fast forward to the present, and now Fernie stands as a vibrant mountain community that has seamlessly blended its storied past with its surroundings to create a modern, outdoor enthusiast's paradise. With a backdrop of towering peaks and lush forests, its allure is undeniable. The downtown exudes charm, and the trails surrounding offer challenge and inspiration to its adventurers. We decided to spend a day in Fernie to explore and recover. We stayed at the Elks Lodge Hostel, this awesome hostel complete with locking storage for our bikes, and it was clear that they catered to both skiers and bikers on the divide, as we met a ton of fellow riders there. After some rest and relaxation, we were off again. This time, we rode south to Barnes Lake along a beautiful and thankfully less busy stretch of highway. After biking into a bustling RV park, we set up camp and enjoyed a few hours in and around the lake. We woke up early and set off. Today would be a long day as we would be riding across the US-Canada border, which promised to be an exciting experience on a bicycle. Along the route, we biked along some real desolate roads in some of the most rural communities I've ever seen, with what seemed like no running water and what I saw was only one store. After passing through, we eventually rejoined with the main road. Before long, we were on the border and the post was in sight. It was here that what I thought would be a fun and simple experience got much more interesting. Lining up for the border, I began searching my bags for my passport. But lo and behold, it was nowhere to be found I thought I must be mistaken, but after unpacking and packing my bags a few times, my worst fears were realized. I had lost my passport. But that's enough for today. You'll have to tune in next time, where I tell the next part of the story. If you want to support the channel, just drop a like, share, and subscribe, or don't. Do whatever you want. But please, make sure to drop your bikepacking stories or any creative feedback you have in the comments below. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Getaway.